Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our presentation. I'm George Barry, senior partner from Barry Architecture and Associates. Beside me is Isaac Martinez, our architect and partner with Barry Architecture. We're here to bring you an update on the Wheatland Lodge and the hospice facility proposed for the town of Strathmore. First of all, I would want to give a big thank you to the Wheatland Lodge Building Committee Board and the Hospice Society Board that have been on here. They've worked diligently over the last several months, and for some of them, it's been over the last several years to even get to this point. So uh, I want to give them all a great big thank you. And if they were here, we'd give them a pat on the back. So without further ado, and Could I save lives? Time, we are um, going to start off with a wonderful video that the Town of Strathmore just presented here and made this past week. So we'll uh, take it away. Sixty years ago, our people came together to build housing for our seniors. We built Wheatman Lodge for our own people, with our own money, and our own local needs top of mind. Our current lodge is built, maintained, and nurtured as a loving, affordable home. To care for those who have phenomenal spirit forged a strong and enduring community. The Wheatland Housing Management Board ensures all community members are respectfully included in life at Strathmore and Wheatland County. Seniors housing should not be an island, but should indeed be the heart of the community. A recent quote from Doug Griffiths, former Municipal Affairs Minister, sums up a central belief of Wheatland Housing. If you want to kill your community, Shut your seniors out of your downtown. Take away their capacity to be directly involved in the most vibrant parts and places of your community. This is the best way to ensure they will not stay in your community. We want Strathmore to be vibrant. This new project will continue to that energy. The story of Wheatland Housing is one where we work together to ensure seniors can be active members of the heart of Strathmore. In this understanding, we produced or sought out the options, ideas, and sentiments of this community. Through a Facebook Live presentation to the community and eight successive community consultations in the autumn of 2020, we went out it connected with more than a thousand people. The location of this project is important to the people who live there and to the entire community. Several sites within the community were thoroughly investigated and presented as options to this new initiative. We heard overwhelming support to choose the undeveloped industrial lands to the east of Hinton Park as the site for our new seniors living space. This site is perfectly located Seniors will use the parks, spend time in the playgrounds and grandchildren, walk to the nearby locally owned stores, and continue to help strengthen the local community both socially and economically. This new community will embrace innovative technologies to improve the lives of everyone calling the lives. This innovative neighborhood will offer us full, a full spectrum of seniors' accommodation, from fully independent living to memory care support. Through partnership with the Minimum Hospice Society, our people will be ensured to start the land of life support if desired. Wheatland Housing is committed to the health and well being of all our residents, and important features are being designed into this program. The mechanical system is designed to diminish the impact of the contagious outbreaks. Outdoor spaces lend themselves to interactive environments, and even the stairs are designed to be unwilling, safe, and senior friendly, as they are all very vulnerable. Being connected to the larger community is a part of treatment housing and seniors as designed exterior spaces for the community to come and connect with the seniors and have also included a bestowed interest into 
that's what it's going to call the damp barrier. And that barrier for people to come and enjoy coffee or also enjoy kids in the lake. People in housing has been about representing and serving the community. Um, but this project, the strong history of being involved with the community, the hard work, dedication, see um, this has created the strength to be put the ongoing program. We want housing that will continue to provide homes for seniors to live in with pride, honor, respect, and safety. We want housing has a long history that will continue to grow and strengthen our community. Great, thank you. Uh, yeah, it was a uh... Excellent video. And to start the, the project update, we would like to give everyone a little bit of a summary of what we heard during the community engagement process. Um, so the first community engagement session, it was related to the site context. Um, for all before we wanted even, even started looking at the design, we wanted to understand the social architecture for this project. Uh, this was really important because our question was, to ask how does the built environment promotes healthy living and sustainable community as it relates to all the different components of this new facility. So for us, in order to understand the physical architecture, we needed to understand the background of the social context and the social architecture for this project. So during the session number one, we really focused on understanding the site context and what were the important amenities of the site and the site location for this new facility. Also, also, we wanted to focus on four design principles that are the functional independence, uh, engagement, health and safety, and quality of life. So one of the first things that what we heard is was, what was the ideal location for this project? So what we heard from the uh, community and from the engagement process was that this location will have to be a urban site, close to downtown, close to services that are, were in place, and in a central location. Some of the other features that were very strongly brought out and that we heard repeatedly throughout all of the sessions that we held was that they wanted to be close to medical services, close to shopping. Walking trails are very, very important. And the Kinsman Park currently has some incredible walking trails in there. So we wanted to enhance those. And we want to ensure that the seniors have an opportunity to utilize them and also use it as a secondary entry for families coming to visit. Some of the specific site amenities that came up very loud and very strong throughout the presentation was the desire to have vegetable gardens, raised garden beds, so that people with all ages and all disabilities can participate in them. Covered patio, currently the current covered patio at the lodge is used quite extensively. So it really came in strong and we heard it loud and clear that we need a covered patio. The other desire that we're further exploring through introducing some possible photovoltaics and other alternate energy solutions is covered parking, providing some covered parking for the seniors. We're still exploring the opportunity to have some underground parking for some of the independent living suites that we will see later, but also some covered parking for the surface grounds on there. And one thing that's very, very important into the entire process is it must be accessible to the public. We want to ensure that as Minister Griffin said, former Minister Griffin said, that we don't build an island. Senior homes have been built on island-like sites too often. We want to bring them into the public. We want to provide that public connection, but still maintain their privacy. So we've really maintained the accessibility to the public in the project. So during the session number two, uh, we, we discussed the common spaces of the facility. Uh, still, still looking at the fourth uh, principles uh, of design, uh, we wanted to, to understand what are the common spaces, what were important to bring into this new facility. So one of the first things that we talk about and we heard is about the history and culture. So this means of how we can represent some of the history, the background, the culture of the whole Whitland County and also Strathmore. Uh, so one of the things that we heard was a strong agricultural and farming connections, uh, ranching, uh, the railroad, uh, the grain elevators. So some of, some, of, some of these components are the ones that we took away that so how we wanted to integrate into the facility 
into the outdoors or into the indoors of the, this new uh, facility as well. History was very, very strong in the elements that came out in our sessions. And one of the things that's in the current lodge that we will be designing to be front and center in the new lodge is an opportunity to hang up legacy quilts. They have a very strong quilting aspect and quilting group in the lodge right now. And we're looking to extend that and really want to continue that coming on there. As I said early, earlier, the covered patio areas must happen in there. But throughout the sessions, it came up very, very loud that the residents and the community take great pride in the staff. The staff are just not employees. They become families in there. So the discussion was quite strong and quite proud to ensure that the staff had their amenities and their desires looked after. So we're going to be proposing that there's a larger commercial kitchen in here that's fully air conditioned. So we're not having fans and it's a comfortable space to work in. There's storage rooms, there's lockers for staff. There's a private staff retreat area that after a long tiring morning shift, the staff need a break, they can go into the staff room and get their quiet time away from there. The residents are also looking for some really strong amenities coming in here. And these are amenities that we design in our facilities across the province and across Western Canada. Some features such as they want to have a family kitchen dining room for the special birthday and anniversary parties coming in. They want to make sure that the lodge has a large entry and foyer suite coming in there so that it's something that they can be truly proud of. One feature that came up repeatedly, and I have to say repeatedly, and pretty well every single option was there, was they wanted to have a pub. We want to create a pub-like atmosphere in here, someplace where the uh, Seniors can get together and enjoy the last hockey game of the season. The Flames are coming up with pretty quick here. Um, we want to make sure that we have that opportunity to have a to have a pool game, to have some darts going on, to have some crafts and other other games and venues going on. Tuck shop and gift shops are very important coming into theirs, and they've been located in such a facility that the public can get into them and purchase some of the crafts that have been made by the local people. And of course, the building is going to have 100% Wi-Fi activity there. So you'll always be able to get a hold of your mom and dad or grandma and grandpa because they'll be on Wi-Fi throughout the entire facility. From a physical activity point of view, it came up really strong, really prevalent in a lot of the discussions that we don't want to have a built-in, closed-in fitness room. We don't want this gym-like structure. We want to utilize the facility to increase the physical fitness activities for the seniors. So there's lots of indoor options. As Glenn alluded to in the video, the stairwells are even designed to be somewhat of a fitness direction. We use very low rises and long treads on there. So they're very comfortable for walking up there. A lot of outdoor options where there can be games and activities played outside. But at the same time, we want to make sure that the seniors have a place of refuge and some privacy that they can go into when they just need that quiet day, that perhaps they, the weather's out and a little gloomy and they're just not all upbeat. And we want to have some space where they can go and sit down and read a quiet book. So we'll have a library in the facility that will have a door, some very soft furnishings that are senior friendly. And that would be similar to what you would have in your own home. And another thing that's very important for our, our long winters that we can run into is that we're looking for quality views to the outdoors. We don't have just straight big glass windows where we'll be enhancing the windows through creating vistas and so that they can get a variety of views to make that connection to the exterior stronger. So after hearing the feedback related to the site context, the common amenities of this new facility, we then uh, wanted to hear about the neighborhoods and the suites, looking into more of the private spaces, because when we, we understand that this is a home uh, for the residents, it's not a home life, so we need to understand, we wanted to know what are the importance and amenities of these private areas like the neighborhoods. Uh, we were exploring different types and layouts of, of these neighborhoods, uh, different models. So we really heard that uh, we wanted to have a, a neighborhood that wasn't just the typical, perhaps double loaded corridor. We wanted to have a neighborhood that was invited that maybe have a little bit of a strong shared spaces in the middle that you know the residents can, can come together, can have some uh, common amenity space, uh, and that feels more like a home rather than an institution. So with the direct building, some of the features that we're alluding to there that I, Isaac was uh, getting on to there, and one of the things that we want to really keep keep uh, going strong and something at Perry Architecture that we do is 
we don't design pods. We believe that peas grow in pods and whales live in pods, but seniors live in neighborhoods. People live in neighborhoods and micro communities. And so we're developing micro communities that have their own little features into their individual neighborhoods. So we're creating small kitchen areas in some of these breakout neighborhoods. There's, break, there's uh, breakout dining areas. So a small group where there's 12, 13 rooms, they can put on a special dinner one evening and just have it in their own little neighborhood. They'll be warm, inviting colors, just like we would see in our homes of today. Something that really brings in some positive atmosphere coming into. All of the units would have direct access to outdoor patios from these common areas, either to balconies on the elevated floors or onto a main floor. So out of these common central areas that you may have noticed on the previous drawings, there will be some connections to the outdoors. Some of the amenities that the seniors asked for in their own individual suites were they want walk-in showers. Handicap accessible walk-in showers will be in all the suites. They want large windows so that we can continue the views to the outside. The windows are also designed in such a way that a senior or individual sitting down in a chair looking out a window is not looking at one of those mullions directly coming across there. We've got enough experience that we know the height that they have to be at, that they can look over those mullions in that particular case. We're using luxury vinyl tile flooring in here, which is a great product that can go in there, very durable. Um, and very uh, maintenance friendly and the seniors really love it because it brings in some nice rich warm colors. There's kitchenettes in the suites where we can bring different amenities, microwaves, they can have outlets to put a kettle or put a, put a toaster if they would like into some of the suites if they're at that care level that they can handle that. There's storage for clothing and personal items in every suite. We've got Wi-Fi in every suite. I can't overemphasize that um, enough that there's Wi-Fi throughout the buildings. We've designed these homes. These are not home-like structures. These are homes. They're creating a sanctuary for the seniors. They're creating their own little safe haven that they have coming into there. They are home. This is their home. In the individual residence suites, a few of the other items that came up loud and strong were the accessible washrooms, the kitchenettes and suites, private bedrooms. We have private bedroom areas into them all. Some of our funding allotments on the province do not allow us to create one bedroom suites. So we've created a uh, modified one bedroom where we just don't put the door onto it and we provide a little bit larger opening into the space. So it effectively operates as a bedroom. We've got um, pat patio connections on some of the suites on some of the main floor suites. We've got the outdoor patios. There's living dining room spaces in every individual suites and individual storage. So we also had a, a full engagement session regarding the hospice care. Um, at this moment, we even, uh, you know, we, we understood what hospice care means. Uh, we discussed what palliative uh, care means as well in this session. So, so we can understand better what are the requirements for the hospice. Uh, even at this moment, we're still in discussions with the with the hospice in 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 terms of the design, as we're still kind of going through different spaces, different requirements. So this is still a process that is ongoing. But uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see. This is some sort of the things that we heard regarding the hospice and what are the the requirements and their needs for this facility. So yeah, depending, we, we understood what palliative care is, and we understood that it's helping people feel and feel as well as possible. Uh, you know, we understood that it has to be a home uh, setting. Uh, we also wanted to discuss what hospice care means, uh, and you know, what are the services that I aim at the comfort for for the for the residents. Um, so one of the things that we heard is that we need to have family support spaces, uh, spaces like. Uh, potentially a spiritual care room, maybe a, a private garden, uh, also a, a shower shower room uh, for some of the family to, to be able to support uh, yeah, their, their family members. Other things that we heard about is some of the support spaces for staff, uh, definitely a staff room. Uh, that's something that, that, that is important for, for the staff uh, to, to have. The, uh, the hospice board has been has been a great group to work work with. And, uh, Barry and uh, Joni have been a great group, and they've really compiled a group that is truly, truly dedicated 
to providing that end of life respectful care coming into uh, this facility. It's been a great partnership and they've been super to work with. It's been um, quite a learning experience for a lot of people that have never been involved with hospice facilities coming into it. And so some of the things that are very important into, into the rooms and into the suites that are coming in here, you see we've got a couple of pictures of some spaces on there, but we want to make sure that there's some private garden area, a lot of green, a lot of plantings out there so that we can bring the outdoor to the inside. So we can allow the people from the inside to experience the outdoor spaces. It can be a very calming and a very spiritual element to get some of the garden and some of the landscaping on the exterior. And every room is going to have a pull-out bed or a Murphy bed so that family members can stay directly overnight and to support the hospice staff and volunteers, but as well as provide end-of-life care to, to their loved one that's in there. I know it's very important from personal experience there of spending time with my father it's very, very important to have that kind of connection. And soft, comfortable furniture. A lot of people spend an awful lot of time with their, with their loved ones at the end of life to be, to be there at the respectful time and at the correct time to work for them. So we're gonna have a lot of soft and comfortable furniture there. Quality views and sunshine. You don't want a lot of direct sunshine coming into there because it can cause some um, temperature differentials in the rooms that aren't that comfortable. And so we got a lot of indirect light coming in there, but a lot of quality views overlooking um, the Kinsman Lake to the west from where we have the lodge connected into it and the hospice connected, but provides a lot of sunshine opportunities in there. The hospice has a great partnership that they've created with the Wheatland Board here, but the one thing that we have done is we provided them with a separate entity. You won't, you won't come into the hospice through the main entrance in the lodge. And you'll see that a little bit later when we show some floor plans and we show some of the elevations that have been created. That, the hospice has its own separate entrance and its own identity that you can clearly tell this is an important part of the facility. It's not like you're walking in a back door by any stretch of the imagination. But at the same time, the partnership that's been created there allows the hospice to share some of the um, more daily tasks that have to go on. The commercial kitchen, meals can be prepared by the Wheatland staff and brought over. and They can be cooked, they can be reheated in the hospice area. It was one of the positive things that you see in, in hospices is the smell of, of that apple pie being baked or some peach cobbler coming in there or some of the experiences that people will share at the end of life there. They've got shared operational items that can help reduce some of the costs and some of the partnerships in the laundry, in the maintenance and in the cleaning component there. And so the hospice and the Wheatland Board, um, even though they're operating as two separate entities, Together on this project, they are effectively operating as one. It's been an outstanding partnership that has been created. So on our final session, we, we kind of want to give a summary of everything that we heard during the previous, uh, previous community engagement uh, uh, yeah, sessions. And this is where we really took all of the comments, all of the, the needs from what we heard from the community, from everyone that was involved during this process that we thought was great. So then we took all that back to our team. We kind of summarized everything. And then we kind of started to look at how we were going to start thinking this physical architecture. Uh, again, as we said the social architecture was the first and most important element to understand. So then we can take all this uh, data, all this information, and then start thinking about a design, start thinking how this relates uh, to the site, but also to the building and, and, and the, yeah, the floor plans. So one of the things is we talk directly about the site and about the elements that came into it is um, I, I want to just give a little bit of technical background here. We've been going for about 24 minutes here, but if you have some questions, you have some thoughts, just keep them to the end. We're going to have lots of time at the end for some uh, questions and answers that will make sure that everybody's um, questions or their comments are heard. And so just keep those um, those written down and uh, when we get into that point, uh, Tracy, our lovely uh, assistant supporter behind the scenes here, will make sure that we get all those. So as was alluded to in the video, we did examine several sites that came up and even, even late into the process, there was sites that we wanted to look at that people said, well, what about this site? What about that site? So we did an analysis and we did a review of all the sites that came up and hands down, hands down, without even anything really being significantly close to it. The site that was chosen and is the best site for a senior's development here is the site that's located on the old industrial site east of Kinsman Lake. Um, it was alluded to in the video that came out there that that site's currently zoned properly. 
It's got a lot of proximity. It's got a lot of the features that not only in Strathmore, but in all of our seniors design facilities, we wanna make sure that are prevalent. So we really focused on, on that site after we spent the time, quite exhaustive time, working with, um, with Barry and Glenn and the entire um, Wheatland uh, board and hospice board, looking at different sites, kept on coming back to this. Site. And this is why we ended up focusing on this site here. So the next, next slide here, the trace bring it up, shows a little bit of our connection, a little bit of a um, little bit of our elements that we're looking for. You can see that right there, we're showing the building as a blue block because we're looking at some of the site analysis, some of the site context coming into there. We wanted to make sure that the site is in, within walking distance of downtown. We wanna make sure that the people from the lodge could reach to downtown Strathmore as well as downtown Strathmore can reach out to the lodge. We wanna see that connection. That's how we break down the isolation. That's how we break down the island effect that we do have in so many lodges here. We wanna make sure that it offers um, strong connection to the central business district the commercial districts that are just off to the east as well there, and to the public service districts that are to the west and a little bit south, where there's other amenities and things like this that are coming into there. And so it really worked out that it was a solid, solid connection. So you can see on here, we highlighted a few of the amenities that we wanted to, to focus on, a few of the directions where we have some sight lines, some of the brown lines are showing some of the walking paths that happen around Kithwin Lake, and seniors will get out and use those. They'll use them year round. So they're really strong, strong connections. Yeah, and continuing with that, we start exploring a little bit of the massing of how this facility would look, how, how, how this facility will blend into the site context. Uh, so yeah, we understand that we, this is a multi-story facility. Uh, we wanted to understand the different flows with traffic flows, uh, pedestrian flows, connections to adjacent buildings and adjacent facilities. Uh, how how this how we could fit this facility to take advantage as as just were mentioning not only on those pedestrian connections to these public uh, amenities that are close by but also to the to the sites right the the Kinsman Lake uh, the the Jason Park connecting those uh, those areas into the lodge so we can create a, a vibrant community right uh, for, for for the seniors and and also understanding what was the best orientation for suites. Uh, for public amenities, for private amenities, access to the lodge, access to the hospice, and, and ensure that, you know, that we understand, understand how the site fit into the whole uh, context, but also thinking about potential, you know, the future expansion and, and also the relationship with, with the whole uh, context. Um, another thing as, as we were uh, uh, yeah, discussing during the community engagement was the history and that strong connection that this facility needs to have with the with the history of Whitland County and Strathmore as well, right? So as as, as we said, we did a little bit of uh, uh, research about you know uh, different structures, different buildings related to the farming, related to the grain elevators. Even as you see, we have a picture there of the new of the new uh, city city uh, city hall there. So. So it was important to, to us to understand what are the new buildings that are getting uh, yeah, constructed around the site, but also what's the background of the history. So we could somehow try to integrate that into this new facility. One of the things that we really wanted to focus on because it came very loud and very strong throughout all the community sessions that we were participating in, and as well as input that came after was the site features. We want to really, really focus on that. We want to create some entities and some directions on here that can create some strong, strong partnerships. We've got some images up on the screen here now that one's showing some birdhouses. This is an opportunity that we see to bring some of the wildlife directly onto the site, but it's also an opportunity that we can partner with some of the local woodworking craft shops, some of the high schools perhaps to have a birdhouse design competition, to get the uh, wood shop and programs in, uh, in the local high schools, um, to, to participate and become active members in the, uh, in the Wheatland Board and the community in the large there. We're going to be creating some um, dry well beds there that we can control our stormwater management system. We're big believers here at Barry Architecture that we want to control our runoff. We want to 
uh, get our runoff back down to the ground so we can increase our aquifers below ground. But we believe that Mother Nature will do a lot better job of controlling our flows than we will as designers. And so we want to create some of the dry beds on there. We want to have some water that um, brings some other elements to it. Butterflies need water, for example, to, to mate, to grow, and to get other um, increase our population there. So we're gonna be utilizing that. There's gonna be walkways with trellises, various varieties of plants and directions. You can see we're proposing, you'll see later in the, some of our slides that we've created, some raised beds for gardening, that we can create some vegetables in there that can actually be used in the laundry. We can create some, some herbs, some spices, um, a variety of different plants that can be used for raised garden beds happening in there. We really want to create some strong, strong site amenities that can tie into the strengths of the Kinsman Park around Kinsman Lake right now and allow that to flow up into the site of our existing building and our building flow into the site of the Kinsman Park and the greater surroundings. So on the site that we um, was finally selected there, it's a difficult site, there's no doubt about it. It was, uh, it was a long, narrow site um, coming into there, but based on the input that we received from the community and wanting to have the neighborhoods and create those micro communities within there. We were able to effectively break up the lodge into three different areas and two on the ground floors into a hospice area, into an administration area and then a suites area. We have some nice flow happening on there where we integrate our parking into um, and our drive aisles into the existing parking to the north that will tie into the uh, town of Strathmore's new hall there. We've had discussions with the fire department early in the process to ensure that firefighting access is provided into here. They're 100% on board, very supportive of this project because we've actually increased some of their access to um, firefighting and protection in the downtown area through this direction here. We have created from the site some micro communities and micro cultures that will develop um, within some of the wings of the buildings. We've got strong, strong visibility that are happening out over Kinsman Lake and out into the greater neighborhood that are coming in there. Um, so we've really, really focused on this site. And um, it wasn't an easy site for Isaac and myself to, to work on, for Isaac and me to work on. But with the uh, help of the Wheatland Board, they gave us a lot of latitude. I think we've come up with some, some pretty exciting uh, venues and some pretty exciting amenities that the seniors of Strathmore will really love when it's developed. So this is the architectural uh, main floor plan. As uh, George mentioned, this is divided in three blocks. So uh, we have the hospice, the hospice block right to the, to the north side. Then we, we have a central area where we have the common amenity spaces of the facility, uh, including dining rooms, uh, kitchen areas, uh, the, you know, the administration side. And then uh, the, the other block is where we have the uh, neighborhoods with the suites for the residents. You can see on that neighborhood to the um, top there, it's actually on the south portion of the site there, that it's been broken into a couple different varieties and it's intended to um, provide the variety of different care levels that this facility will have. Right now, we're basically planning it from 100% independent care up on the top floor to the end of life hospice care throughout, um, throughout the facility, as well as having in there the SL2, 3s, 4s, and the 4D, which is our memory care group. So we do have a variety of floor plan layouts that will work for all of these. The upper floors, as we move to, to those, is very similar to the main floor plan. You can see it's been connected there. On the north wing above the hospice, we've created another little neighborhood up into there. A little bit smaller than the other ones, and, um, but it provides some different usage. Each one of these neighborhoods will have its own unique characteristic. One may have um, kitchens that could have white cabinets in, one may have some dark cherry cabinets in, one may have some walnut cabinets um, in a small kitchenette area, one we may elect to leave as more of a more of a craft area or a activity area where there could be a backgammon game set up or a poker game set up into there. Some different activities can occur. We have lots of lots of variety of multi-purpose spaces that can be utilized for some of the programming that the great recreation programmer for Wheatland does right now and can expand onto it. We've got a um, chapel there that connects through an atrium from the main floor to create some two-story volumes and a secondary larger kitchen into there. There's elevators happening in two different components of the building. So we're not having everybody having to get to one elevator to get down. Big wide corridors 
and a lot of flows happening in there. And so this is an example of our typical floor plan that really works for our second, third, and fourth floor. Up on our fifth floor, and this is going to be a little bit of a new design that uh, a lot of the uh, Wheatland boards haven't seen. It's uh, fresh off the uh, off the computer. I used to say off the drawing boards, but uh, really it's off the computer that, that we've created with our some of our staff. Is that on this fifth floor is the independent living floor. This floor is fully independent living suites. They the residents up there don't have to move if they age in place. It's a true aging in place facility. The care services could come to them. They could even arrange to have weekly suite cleaning. Um, they could go down and have some meals with the other lodge residents if they would like. Um, but the individual suites do have their full kitchen laundry facilities in each of them. There's 33 suites up on here with a variety of sizes and suite layouts. Um, the lighter purple colors are violet are one bedroom suites and the darker colors are some of the two bedroom suites. But you can see we've still followed the same patterns downstairs of having the individual neighborhoods and the connections there so that we can have small micro communities being created. The suite layouts for the um, individual units for the um, lodge care, which would be on the first, second, third, and fourth. Yeah, done too. This is a example of um, how those suites are. They're running in about the 350 square foot range. Some are a little bit bigger. There's none that are smaller than that. Um, you see they do have some storage. They're all 100% barrier free. So anybody with mobility issues of any kind can certainly um, uh, find this to be a wonderful home in there, small kitchenettes in there, um, dining kitchen areas happening in them all with um, luxury vinyl tile flooring is, is very, very important at this point in time. The next floor plan here is just showing um, two of the typical individual suites for the uh, independent living upstairs. You can see um, that on the two bedroom units, it's, uh, we've actually separated the bedrooms so that they're not not side by side. Most of the time we find when seniors are moving into facilities, still looking at the independent, it's um, one, one of the spouses inevitably is a little bit of a snore. And so we have the room separated across for ease of sleeping, full kitchen, there's dining, dining in all of them and laundry facilities in, um, in all of the rooms. And there'll be a portion of the suites up there that will be fully barrier free. The single bedroom one has all the features just without the second bedroom effectively. It's a challenging layout because we wanna make sure that all of the plumbing and structural work to minimize cost and construction is on there. But they worked out great. And as we move it along, we'll be further refining these into the um, same finish. So now we're gonna look a little bit of the exterior look of the facility. So, so for the elevations, we really wanted to incorporate some of the elements that we hear from the community engagement sessions. Uh, this is related to materials, materials to relate to the existing elements surrounding the, surrounding the site, surrounding the, the farming, the ranching, the, 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 the agriculture. So we wanted to, to bring some of those materials. Also, we wanted to ensure that we have low maintenance materials, also um, materials that that are kind of residential, residential looking. So we didn't want to, to see that this building as an institutional building. So really wanted to show that it looks like a home, right? Uh, we understand that it's a multi-story facility. So we also uh, wanted to break out the, the whole elevation, the whole facade in different components. So you create a nice flow uh, around the whole building. Also making sure that the entrances, both from the, from the hospice and from the lodge, they're really distinctive. Uh, they're easy to to locate, and also that has a nice, uh, you know, a nice inviting, welcoming uh, feel as you approach the facility. So we're going to see a couple of these artistic representations in the next slides. Uh, on this one, we see uh, this is a view of the main entry of the lodge. Uh, so really having a, a nice uh, canopy to to provide a shelter area as as people are visiting, as people are getting dropped off. So that really uh, is nice because not only can I drive your eyes into the entry of the facility, but also provides a shelter space uh, as people are waiting for somebody to, to pick them up or to get dropped off uh, as well, right? We wanted to ensure that uh, the facility has a nice 
uh, you know, uh, composition in terms of elements and to try to break out the elevations and bring some of these historical elements to it. So this next, uh, next uh, slide shows uh, the, the main entry to the hospice. Again, right, it's, uh, it's, it's making sure that uh, you can really uh, see what's the, what's the main entry of, the, of this space. Again, uh, providing a little bit of a shelter area, uh, pretty, making sure that the entry is pretty distinctive uh, into the facility. And, and, and so it doesn't look like it's the, you know, a secondary entry, but also it's a, it's a nice entry where you can break the elevation and really emphasize it into the materials and, and the massing of the whole building. So on this slide, you can see a little bit now some of these common amenity spaces that, that we had during the community engagement. Uh, you know, this is a nice flow, how these uh, also spaces are protected within the building. So, so you are sheltered from some of the winds, but also you're open to, to some of these common uh, uh, site uh, amenities like the, the Kingston's Lake and the park. Uh, again, you can see how there's the potential to having some of these uh, bird houses, uh, also having some of the raised garden uh, garden beds for the residents, uh, a little bit of a shelter shelter structure uh, for so people so they can hang out, people can walk around the, the facility, right? So creating really a nice inviting spaces that you know that are welcoming uh, and are easily to approach and easy to work and easily connect to to the other amenities around the site. One of the things I'll just interject here that you would have seen in the last couple of slides as it relates to the exterior is the use of some bold colors uses some nice deep warm colors that are happening onto here. So in the front entrance, we we had some reds and uh, tie in very nice into the brown wood toned colors happening in there. So we wanted, we're using that as the um, jumping off block to make the connection from the exterior to the interior. Some of these colors you will have, will have noticed popped up on a few of our interior slides that we had shown because we want to make that connection coming in there. We find that they're they're really solid colors, they're really warm colors, they're really inviting colors um, that re really bring some of the home feel that we have in there into everybody's home. Keep talking about, and a lot of people will talk about this home like in a home feel. We're talking about their homes. And so we wanna have that opportunity to bring the nice rich colors that we're using on the exterior to the interior. And as Isaac alluded to earlier with the raised gardens, the circular walking paths happening out here, this is, um, would be on the west side of the building in one of the niches that are created there that is going to provide some protection from the winds that we can often get the northwest winds in the winter coming in here that this is um, for a lot of the time and certainly in Strathmore could be a four seasoned area coming down there the paths are nice and wide so that they can have maintenance by the staff whether they're um, with a brush broom um, attachment to a bobcat in the winter to keep those walking paths clear or they're shoveled there. There's uh, lots of opportunities. The maintenance has been thought about as much in the very, very durable materials that are coming in there. So we've got the strong, strong outdoor amenity connections coming. That's right. So that kind of wraps up our really our formal presentation that we had done here. We've got uh, 17 minutes, I see, to um, eight o'clock remaining for any questions or comments because what we really wanted to do here and what the Wheatland Board did in town of Strathmore and the uh, um, the hospice, everybody in here was we wanted to give the public an opportunity to, to, to see where this project has progressed, to see that the comments that you made, they have been heard. Not every comment that was brought up in our sessions and the over a thousand people that have been um, communicated with over this process have been integrated for various reasons, but I can certainly assure you that um, Isaac, myself, and our two Tracys have been involved with this project and several other people involved with this have read every single comment that have come out, every single question that was up. We record these sessions so that we know and we can go back to make sure that they are so we heard what came in so that we develop a project that is going to be strong for the town of um, Strathmore and the entire Wheatland uh, community and Wheatland County direction in there. So. Uh, I guess we can open it up right now. Tracy's uh, sitting computer can uh, you can type questions in. She can unmute you, I believe. Um, come through, and Isaac and I will be more than pleased to spend the next uh, sixteen minutes and uh, answer your questions if anybody has it. Brenda, I see you've unmuted yourself. Hi. Um, 
Okay, it, it, really nice to anticipate and be involved and watch this develop. Um, one of the questions that I had is, will there actually be, I understand the hospice, but will there actually be like a long-term memory care wing that is connected to this community? And then the second thing that I wanted to ask, you mentioned something about um, balconies on each of these suites. Um, will all the suites have balconies? According to your draw up there, um, you look pretty, pretty straight faced um, as far as architecture goes on the outside. Um, so I, I wasn't really sure whether that's the final drawing or, or whether, you know, you're still kind of working the details and the designs. Certainly, thank you for the question, Brenda. I think I'll, I'll field at least the first one there. Um, yes, we do have a, um, a full memory care component on there um, that would be more likely located on the uh, ground floor south wing in one of our neighborhoods that were connected into there. We've been working with Alberta Health Services on some of the new policies and standards we want to do, as well as some of the um, more progressive standards that we see from some of the European and American communities are coming in there. So we will be designing a entirely focused uh, memory care dementia component on there. Um, the second is that yes, some of the, certainly the suites on the main floor all will have um, exterior access. Uh, right now that plan that was shown on there is showing balconies to the fifth floor, the independent ones. And the suites on the second, third, and fourth will probably have a variety of them. We generally don't see that they are used as much as a lot of people think. So we do provide outdoor common balconies on every floor, but it is not certainly a final elevation by any stretch of the imagination. And if through our discussions, people are saying we want balconies happening onto them, we will look at it and work and develop a portion of the suites having balconies. Super, thank you very much. Um, yeah, great to see this develop. <laughs> thank you, Brenda, thank you for attending. Tracy, we got somebody else. So far we've got no one. Quiet, quiet. Oh, sorry, there. Uh, Ron, it looks like you've unmuted yourself. Yes, I have, thank you very much. Um, first of all, yes, it looks like a very beautiful building. I have a couple of questions for you. Um, so, I was surprised to see it's five stories. So is it gonna be up on the ridge, like where you come off of Center Street? Uh, it sort of is the lower part and then goes up onto the ridge where the trees and the park are and everything? Yeah, yes, it is a little bit there. There's a flat area in there. And um, Isaac and I got uh, quite excited when we got some topography information the other day because the site has less than a meter elevation gain from the south end to the north end. And so it is a little bit on a upper elevation there. It's um, before we did make the final decision to go to five stories, it was actually a discussion that was held with the fire department as well to ensure that firefighting would come in there. And from an architectural point of view, having a tall building adjacent to, uh, well, not a, a tall building, five stories nowadays, we don't really consider it tall because we want to increase our densification into our areas. Um, ha having an elevated building against a, a lake setting is uh, provides some very strong characteristics to the area. Okay, because um, like right now there's a row of trees behind there that are just absolutely beautiful. Yes. So um, uh, is there a plan to tear down those trees or uh, what do we plan on doing with, with, the, we will, with the trees? We will keep, Ron, it's a great question. Um, as an environmental architecture firm that uh, Isaac and I have created here, we will keep absolutely every living entity possible um, before the final, um, design configuration is 100% submitted and 100% finalized um, with our topography uh, map that we just recently has, has all the trees surveyed and marked in there. And there's very few of them. I don't even wanna say if any of the larger size trees that would be removed. And if they are, we are planting. You'll see there's a lot of planting, a lot of directions happening in there. So we will not, our goal is to ensure we have a net positive to our vegetation and certainly never a net negative. And also we want to take advantage of those trees because we understand that those provide some shelter as well during the during the summer months. Uh, you know, it's so it's important to keep the trees as well because not only it's a, a, an exeter site feature, but also uh, they help us right as well uh, orient the building and also they provide shelter and shape. Yeah. Okay, and uh, I'm scared I'm hogging all the uh, time that you guys have here, but uh, so the the 
part that is facing the park, is it going to be like what would be considered the back of the building? You know, like, like where the uh, air conditioning units are, the heating units, uh, like is there going to be noise coming from the building towards the park? No, the short, the short answer is no. And where I'd say that is that we don't believe in creating a front and a back to it. Um, the building and drawn on there will have a flat roof. Um, we like flat roofs for a lot of different reasons. Most of our air handling units, and there will be a lot of smaller air handling units, as Glenn alluded to in the video. Um, our mechanical system is being designed so that we can control any um, future pandemics or future outbreaks coming into there. And so we will have mechanical units up on there and they will be all buffered from sight and from noise control. So you can enjoy the park without hearing the loud whirl of an air conditioning unit. Okay, well, awesome. Uh, I do have some other questions, but I'll just pause now and I'll let uh, other people ask the questions. You know, so I'll be good. Actually, I have, I have a comment to make. My name is Marjorie. I live right across from Kinsman Park. It's absolutely beautiful. I think the, uh, the area that you picked out is absolutely great. I have to tell you, I am totally appalled at the architecture. The one area, the one part looks like a green elevator. Uh, I'm 78 years old. I've been looking forward to seeing this architecture, seeing the new building, probably putting my name in, going there when, when it's done. I've totally changed my mind after I have seen uh, all the colors, for crying out loud. You know, we're seniors. We don't go for reds and yellows and greens and blues. You know, we're seniors. We like beiges and grays and, you know, something more subtle, okay? I noticed with inside when you showed the building, not so much the people's rooms that they have, they can bring in their bed, they can bring in their chairs, but what you have, you've got modern design. I saw a coffee table that is done with wrought iron, that's modern. I saw little end tables, other little chairs, tiny skinny legs. You know, when I got married 55 years ago, that's probably all we could afford. And, <laughs> I don't want that again. And I don't think if you talk to any senior, we like something round and comfortable and padded and, and whatever. And so I'm talking Chesterfield, I'm talking end tables, what you would put in the building, not me if I got a suite and I could bring in my own bed, etc. I have been in a lot of lodges. I'm an entertainer. There's some absolutely beautiful places. I swear they look like cruise ships. They're beautiful. What do they have in there? Seniors. I don't want modern things. I don't want red and yellow and green. I don't want a, a, a front part that looks like an elevator that's on the screen right now. I don't like that. And you know, if down the block from me, somebody built an apartment, right? That's empty. That is the cheapest looking thing that I've ever seen in my life. For what I know, it was never completed. It's cheap, it's ugly, it's for sale. That's exactly what this lodge is gonna look like in my opinion. I am so disappointed. Whoever came up with this cowboy design, really, so I love Strathmore. I love everything about it. I think uh, the buildings, the new buildings that we've built are great with the exception of this apartment down the end of the block. And I'm sure if you drive by Kinsman Park and you look over and you see that thing, that's exactly what it reminds me is what this lodge is gonna look like. I am so, so disappointed. That's my opinion. Maybe there's a lot of seniors that like it as for me, you want an opinion, that's mine. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much for your opinion, Marty. We do, uh, um, we do want to hear that. We do want to hear all, all voices in the spectrum. We will certainly take all of your comments very much into consideration. And your, uh, and your comments do mean something to me, as I don't want to ever have anybody think that we are not listening or we are not hearing them. And I know that Isaac and I, um, as the designers involved with this, will certainly take, uh, take your comments very much to, um, to consideration and to heart. And 
And so how old are your designers? How old are your designers? What's the age of your designers? 40 and 50s? Okay, I'll, I'll be honest. I'm 58 years old. I have won international design awards for uh, my seniors housing. And right. I've been designing seniors housing and consulting with seniors for the last 20 years, Mark. And um, we do believe that we do have an overall perspective of um, what a lot of seniors are looking for. I do value your perspective and I don't want to diminish it in any capacity. And as I said, we will certainly take this into um, consideration. And it's certainly not the opinion that has come to us through the um, conversations and the directions that we have had in Strathmore. But everybody's oh, when, when did these when did these questionnaires go out? Because I never got one, or 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 you know the proposed look of this building or the colors of it. I never received anything. And where I'm living, there's all seniors down the block from me. So. How come we were never advised or that we could give an opinion then? Same with this apartment at the end of the street. We all protested about that. Guess what? They built it anyway. And now it's empty and it's sitting there. And it's an eye store. And it, just too bad. Like, it's just too bad. I don't know who makes these decisions. And certainly we're at the stage of the process that nothing what you guys see today is finalized, right? This is still the early stages of the whole process. And that's why we're doing this right now to hear all types of comments. So not doesn't mean that the colors that you see today or the, the floor plans that you see today or the elevations are final. That's the whole point of having this conversation. So we can go back and revisit every single item that, that we showed you guys today. Okay. Um, comment on uh, the chat here from Gary. Uh, this is very exciting. And I thank everyone who has been working on this. One question, we've heard sad stories regarding the impact of the pandemic on seniors and care facilities. Has this design been reviewed and adapted in ways to be better prepared and more livable in the event of quarantines, lockdowns, distancing, et cetera? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for that question, that comment. Um, that's been very much to front and center. One of the, um, one of the challenges that has um, lodges and foundations operating for not just during this COVID um, pandemic situation, but they deal with um, breakouts every year with flu, emphysema, um, various other outbreaks are coming here, and so they're used to it. So this is one of the reasons that we've actually been working with some, some very progressive suppliers and engineers to ensure that we can put in place a system that is going to provide higher air quality, higher monitoring of that, so that we can lock down and have each individual neighborhood controlled in that aspect. We've also designed it with the stair systems and the movement around that staff, in the case of a severe pandemic as we've had here, don't have to go through large components of the facility to get meals into them, that we can have staffing working in one area so we can control the outbreaks of, I hope it's not, not, not COVID moving into here. I hope we're on the downside of it. We can get everybody getting their shots coming down onto the downside of it. But um, next winter, the Wheatland Lodge will be dealing with some flu outbreaks and some cold outbreaks. So we do hope that our mechanical systems that we are putting in place to address your comments uh, will work in there. Some of the technology is new, but it has been proven in other locations. Um, great. Another comment from Debbie. Uh, AHS has identified 33 LTC or long-term care beds as a priority for Strathmore. Will these much needed beds be added to the plan? If so, when? Yeah, long-term care beds have been uh, implemented into, uh, into our facility, into our plan area that we have an opportunity to work with um, AHS to ensure that we're meeting them because it is a priority to them and we're working directly to ensure that they will be accommodated. I won't go through all the comments, but there are lots of comments in regards to this, the design, liking the design, uh, remind, or reminds people of the children's hospital with all the colors. Um, sorry. So we're moving up Where here to um, close to 8 o'clock. We're at 7.59 here, but we don't want to be respectful of everybody's time here. But one thing we are going to add, I want to do thank everybody for taking the time out of their evening for um, for. For, for coming out and giving us the time. We, we appreciate everybody's comment and we will be listening strong to everybody's comment. If you'd like to review this further, uh, we will be posting this presentation on our website um, 
I think Tracy and I kind of, I looked at Tracy and I said by Monday and she kind of gave me the nod that yes, it will be up by Monday. We will be also providing it to the uh, Wheatland Management uh, body that um, they can post it on their website as well. We've been working with the communication department greatly. They've been a, a valuable assistant through the past couple of weeks to get ready for this. Um, provide to them that if they would like to post it or put it out, they can. And the Wheatland Management body and um, through Glenn and his committee will have uh, copies of this that if they would like to make some um, printed copies that will have some of the writing on there as well. So um, this will be available for, um, for future directions and you can always provide your comments back through additional comments through Glenn and the Wheatland Committee. There's two more quick um, comments Sorry. on here um, but one thing to add that I'll also add to George's comment there um, if anybody had trouble with the video link that we shared in the presentation I will also make sure that that is uh, shared on our project website as well as well as it can be accessed through the Wheatland um, management body I believe on their social media pages but um, that was brought to attention. Some people might, might have had a little bit of a hard time maybe hearing some of the audio, but if you did, I will make sure that's also provided as well. Um, lastly, so are there meeting spaces available, available for youth groups to come and sing and craft and visit with the seniors? Yeah, to answer that in the short, yes, there is. There's a lot of activity space happening around there. We're still working on some of the floor plan design changes here because there's been some changes and some uh, quite a bit of interest for us to uh, explore having some meeting room opportunities that some of these groups can do. But there's certainly lots of opportunities and it's designed for a strong community interaction. And then I guess the last question for this evening, are there thoughts of solar panels in the design? Uh, solar panels, I love them. Yes, there certainly are on there. Um, uh, my house here in Red Deer is actually basically powered by solar panels and the economics of it makes a lot of sense right now. The design that we've done and the orientation has been such that the opportunity to cover the majority of the roof with solar panels is there. Uh, we've designed spaces for our mechanical rooms to have all the necessary equipment and it will be um, designed for that to be implemented uh, hopefully sooner than later, but there's a lot of other alternative energy solutions that will be put in, right, starting with our building envelope. We always say the best way to uh, recycle is to never use it in the first place, and that's what that's one of our goals that we're trying to do here. So um, if there's one other one, Tracy, we're going to cut off. It's 802 right now. Uh, good. Possibly, sorry. So, somebody might have sent something to Gary personally instead of sending it to everyone. So we'll leave it at that. <laughs> uh, so I want to thank everybody for um, for uh, for your time. It's 802. We're uh, one hour and two minutes on here. And as I said, this will be posted. And if there's any questions or additional comments, uh, you can certainly find my contact at Isaacs or our website at Barry Architecture or you can run the comments directly through Glenn and his incredible building committee at the Wheatland Board. So um, thank you all very much for, uh, for your evening and we look forward to uh, keeping you updated through newsletters and perhaps another video session as the, as the process uh, moves along. Thank, thank you very much. much, have a great evening. Good night, thanks everyone. Good night, Glenn.